What is up everyone and welcome to my personal guide on how to improve your aim the fastest in FPS games in general, but with a focus on Apex Legends. In this video I plan on showing you how I went from being a hard select diamond ranked player to competing at the highest level in Apex by utilizing Kovex FPS aim training to get the most out of it, but also be talking about hardware, health, and the mentality behind aiming. Before we begin, let me start by introducing myself. I'm Zara and I have competed at the highest level in Apex Legends for a while now. I've been Apex Predator and Master rank almost every season. I've competed in multiple ALGS finals against some of the best teams in the world. And lastly, I have over 1800 hours in Apex Legends and over 500 hours in Kovacs. I also want to shamelessly plug my stream. I'm live on Twitch at least three times a week, so if you have any questions past this video, please feel free to ask in either my chat or in the community discord. To begin this guide, let's talk about why I chose Kovacs and why you should too. Kovacs is pretty simple and customizable. The target's are usually one color which you can change, it has multiple backdrops to choose from, and the user interface can be changed to add or remove parts you see as distracting. For example, this scenario I'm doing usually has a timer, but on my screen I removed it to relieve some pressure when doing challenge runs. While Kovex is not free, it is about $10 on Steam, which I would say is pretty inexpensive for a trainer that will help you improve rapidly. The main reason I recommend Kovex is because it has the largest library of good scenarios to choose from. Scenarios are basically the maps of Kovex. Each one is different and tailored to different aspects of aiming, whether it be click timing, target switching, or my personal favorite, tracking. With all that being said, let me show you how to set up Kovex properly by going into the settings. First thing you'll want to do is adjust the sensitivity scale, which I recommend setting to whatever game you're maining or trying to practice. For this video, it'll be Apex. Then, input your sensitivity on Apex. In my case, I play on 800 DPI and 1.5 sensitivity. One thing I want to mention regarding sensitivity is to not play on too low of a sensitivity and to not play on too high of a sensitivity. While some players can manage it, and while it does differ from game to game, I believe a balanced sensitivity is best for Apex. In order to see how your sensitivity compares to others or even mine, use this website, aiming.pro, to find out your centimeters per 360. What centimeters per 360 refers to is how many centimeters your mouse would have to move across your mouse pad to do a full 360. It takes into account your mouse DPI and your in-gaming DPI. I personally play on 34 centimeters and recommend between 25 centimeters and 40 centimeters for most players. Now, back to the settings. Make sure your vertical sensitivity is locked to horizontal by just matching the two values. It should then check itself. Make sure your mouse is not inverted unless you're trying to practice flying a plane, I guess. Toggle zoom ADS is really up to you. When it comes to the field of view, I recommend setting it to your in-game values. Of course, try on whatever you'd like, but I think the practice translates better when playing on the most similar settings. One thing I want to mention is, if you're using Kovacs to improve, try not to change your settings to make scenarios easier or to get higher scores. For the most part, the rest of the settings are personal preference, but if you'd like a more detailed look into the other settings, check out this video by Hollow. The link will be in the description down below. Now on to actually using Kovacs. First, I would like to refer everyone to this Google Doc from the Voltaic community of recommended scenarios. The link will be in the description down below. Obviously, I can't go through each scenario, this video would take forever, but I'll look at a few of them to give a brief description on how each can improve your aim and how it might affect you in Apex. To start off, we'll look at my weakest aiming style, click timing. A good scenario for beginners to really understand what click timing is would be one wall, six targets, TE. Don't ask me what the TE means, I have no idea. All you have to do is shoot as many of the targets as you can within the time limit as accurately and as quickly as you can. This scenario is accuracy based, which means that your overall score is affected by your accuracy at the end. I would recommend not worrying about score though, and instead to just focus on building up your speed and your accuracy. You'll notice that a lot of your shots aren't exactly stopping on the target, but instead you might pass it, but time your click with your crosshair on the target to get the point. That's pretty much all click timing is. Something I want to mention before moving on is that even though these scenarios might mainly focus on one style of aiming, they still involve multiple aspects of aiming. I haven't touched on this all too much yet, but target switching and target acquisition are generally used in junction with click timing, but I'll talk more about that later. Now that you have a better understanding of what click timing is, another good scenario once you start getting used to the idea is one wall five targets pass to reload. I would suggest this scenario over one wall six targets once you have the understanding of click timing down, mainly because pass to involves moving targets with vertical and horizontal strafing, which means more aiming is involved. This scenario would specifically be improving your accuracy with single shot weapons such as the wingman, scout, and any of the snipers. Like I said before, you will rarely ever use only one aspect of aiming. In Passive Reload, you'll notice that not only am I focusing on click timing each target, I'm also trying to switch between each target as quickly as possible. With that being said, I like to give some advice when it comes to click timing in general and then show how it translates into Apex Legends. First, when doing scenarios like these, I recommend keeping your eyes focused on your crosshair. This is because you want to be ready for the moment your crosshair passes the target in order to click. Also, unless you're some sort of click timing god, you'll want to be patient. Like I said, don't focus on your score, but rather focus on improving your accuracy and your speed as you get better and better. Now here's how all this might come into play in the actual game. Before continuing, I'd like to note that Kovacs is almost entirely a hitscan game. With the exception of the charge rifle, every gun in Apex has varying amounts of bullet travel, which means you'll want to be playing Kovacs as a supplement to Apex, not the other way around. 
While Kovax will improve your raw aim mechanics, you'll still need to understand how to lead certain weapons, how to react to real strafing targets, how to aim while strafing, which I'll touch on later, and much more. So, like everyone likes to say, the best way to get better at the game is to, well, actually play the game. Like I said before, I personally think the best way to click time is to focus on your crosshair placement. I know this is just a dummy that's not moving, but imagine if it was strafing right in front of me. The best way to counter its strafe with a wingman would be to move your mouse less and just focus on timing your click once your crosshair passes the target. Also, now that we're not on Kovax, it's important to remember that ammo is a resource. The wingman is a weapon with a minimum of 5 bullets in a magazine and a maximum of 8. This makes it a very punishing weapon when inaccurate, that's why I think it's important to be patient with your shots and not just shoot hoping one of your bullets will hit. You want to do as much damage in one mag as possible in order to pressure the enemy into either retreating behind cover, which will give you time to reload, or just straight up being able to kill them in one mag. My focus with click timing has been on the wingman so far because it's one of the most difficult weapons to use, but just know that these tips apply to the scout and other snipers, and even close range of shotguns. As with anything though, the best way to improve with something like the wingman is to keep these tips in mind and start practicing it in game. Now that you have a brief understanding of click timing, it's time to move on to target switching. Which you'll actually notice I've kind of been doing some of these clips already. Target switching isn't really an imps on its own, it's always partnered with tracking or click timing. It's honestly not that big of a deal in Apex Legends, as the time to kill is a bit too high for it to matter. It would be highlighted more in a game such as Call of Duty, where there's often two or more targets in front of you that you need down quickly. Regardless though, it can be beneficial in Apex and is definitely worth being good at. Being good at target switching will allow you to spray transfer more efficiently from one target to the next. What this means is you can output more damage more quickly while also saving yourself ammo when spraying from point A to point B. I say spraying because target switching is mostly seen in weapons with bigger magazines, so while you can and will target switch with the wingman, it's not as common. One thing to know before moving on is that target switching and target acquisition, at least in my mind, are a little bit different. Target switching, like I said, is point A to point B, while target acquisition is being able to aim at the target as quickly as possible as soon as it appears. To begin with target switching as someone new to the concept, I highly recommend pat target switch. It's a pretty popular scenario and for a good reason. It's not too hard of a scenario, the target's fairly sized, there's a headshot multiplier, and it's a 180 scenario, which means there are targets on your left and right side, which is more realistic than only being on a flat wall in front of you. Another thing about pat target switch is that it actually has an ammo mechanic that reloads with kills, which encourages you to be efficient with your target switching. So to use this scenario effectively, focus on your accuracy first between switches. In this clip, I'm shooting the entire time, but that's only because I'm already efficient enough at target switching to do it. I would not recommend doing this at first. Instead, only shoot once you've acquired your target, or else you may get stuck reloading a lot. One of my biggest tips for scenarios like these is look with your eyes before switching. Acquire the target with your eyes, then react with your mouse. You'll see this scenario help you out the most in Apex when using weapons such as the R99, R301, Volt, really any spray weapon at all, but especially ones like the Devotion where the max size is large. Once you've gained more of an understanding of target switching, I recommend both Bounce 180 tracking Voltaic Easy and Smoothbot target switching Voltaic Easy. Those are definitely some mouthful of names, but uh, from now on we'll just call them Bounce 180 and Smoothbot. I recommend both mainly because I think both train different key parts of target switching along with tracking in general. I focus more on tracking because Apex is a very tracking oriented game, especially in the current meta spray weapons. In Bounce 180 tracking, you get a feel of tracking arched vertical targets that move either closer to you or farther away from you, and are constantly changing direction. In Smoothbot, there's vertical tracking targets with more linear movement, and it's a 360 scenario. Both are great at practicing your smoothness, your precision, and your speed. My best piece of advice for both these scenarios is to really focus on your mass control. For Smoothbot, it's already in the name, practice longer fluid tracking movements, and for Bounce 180, practice shorter arched tracking movements. There's not too much else to explain about these two scenarios other than feel free to keep shooting the entire time as there is no ammo and there is no accuracy multiplier. It's all about how much damage you can do in the amount of time given. Now let's move on to how these scenarios might help you in game. In Apex there's a lot of vertical movement, whether it be Horizon's tactical, people falling off zip lines or taking zip lines oh up, God. or things like Octane's jump pad and even Pathfinder's grapple. Each are more difficult to track than just standard horizontal movement, that's where these two scenarios help you out. Octane's jump pad, for example, always sends people flying in a pretty predictable arched movement which acts very similarly to Bounce 180. People taking zip lines can be very closely related to Smoothbot depending on how the zip line is placed. Pathfinder grappling in the air is tricky but has elements of both scenarios. There's more things obviously, but you get the point. This kind of became more about tracking than target switching, but that's because like I said, target switching is a bit harder to stand out because of the higher time to kill in this game, but it's still worth practicing. Now we move on to our final and my personal best aim style, tracking. Apex is a game primarily consisting of tracking weapons, so this part will be a bit more detailed than the rest. Tracking, at least in my opinion, will be the main thing you want to practice in Apex, as weapons like the Wingman just don't perform as well as spray weapons do, at least currently in the meta. In games like Apex where the time to kill is higher, tracking usually will be the main style of aiming as you need consistent DPS or damage per second to down players. So hopefully this guide will help you improve your tracking and be able to start one clipping more often and just putting out more DPS in general with great weapons like the R301 or the Volt. 
To start off with tracking, I recommend Grand Plaza Easy No UFO. It's a longer scenario, so don't do too many runs of it in one session, unless you really want to. I recommend Grand Plaza Easy because it has multiple different targets that each have their own dodging pattern with different speeds, so you're not getting used to just tracking one bot, but all of them instead. It's good for beginners because you're getting a feel for different types of strafes and speeds. Also, if the easy version is too slow for you, feel free to take easy out of the title and the normal version. Just make sure it's still no UFO, or you might get frustrated with the UFO bot that teleports around. For this scenario, I recommend you focus on how each bot moves so you can understand how to take it down as fast as possible since that's what you're scored on. The first bot does shorter strafes right in front of you, so do shorter, fast mouse movements left and right. The second bot does similar strafes but against the wall, so you have to adjust to that. The third bot does close fast strafes on you, requiring quicker reactions. The fourth bot does close long strafes on you, so you need to smoothly track it left and right. The fifth bot does long strafes against the wall, so similar to the last bot. The sixth bot does close fast strafes on you again, except at a faster speed. The seventh bot also does longer strafes, but against the wall and a faster speed, again. The last bot does fast strafes against the wall, but again at a faster speed. It might take you some time getting used to, but I really recommend just focusing on your mouse control on each bot and getting better each one as their dodging profiles are pretty basic and will help you out on the more advanced ones. Now that you have a better understanding of tracking, there's honestly too many scenarios I can recommend, so I'm going to quickly list some of them and briefly explain why. Once you've gotten ground plaza down, I recommend trying out air, no UFO, no skybots, as it's a similar scenario but now with vertical tracking involved. I recommend both plaza high ground sparky and plaza low ground sparky as they both replicate situations in apex when aiming from the high or low ground, which is pretty often in apex. I recommend Apex CLS Headshot to practice your smoothest close range, remember to track the head, not the body. I recommend some movement scenarios like LGC3 Reborn, since you're not sitting still in Apex while shooting, remember that the laser gun has knockback, so sometimes the targets may float if you're tracking them properly. Lastly, I recommend Close FS Easy Dodge and focus on mirroring and anti-mirroring enemy target strafes. There's plenty more scenarios than that, but those are some good ones I would recommend practicing first. If you want more scenarios, I'll be linking the Voltaic Discord down in the description where you can find multiple resources regarding Kovacs and scenarios. Also, usually I would explain how this all helps in Apex next, but like I said, so much of the game is tracking that this whole section will help you in almost every situation in Apex regarding aiming. So just start playing and you'll notice. Now that I've explained Kovacs and some of its scenarios, I'd like to mention two things regarding health. Personally, when training and not going for high scores, I don't recommend doing more than an hour of Kovacs in one session. If you're really feeling like doing more, go ahead, but just be healthy about it. If you have the time, do your hour of Kovax, your aim training, then hop into Apex to translate what you've been practicing into the real game. To me at least, the more Kovax you do, the more burnout you'll have, the quicker you'll plateau, you might even run into some injuries, so just be wary of that and just be careful. Speaking of injuries, I highly advise you stretch your wrists, your arms, even just your body in general when gaming for long periods of times, but definitely when aim training. On screen is a stretching routine and posture guide made by Caster from the Voltaic community. I highly recommend you follow the instructions in the guide to avoid injuries and to just keep your aim feeling good. Before I started stretching, I would often run into an issue of my wrist feeling like it was strained, which would affect my aim for a couple weeks. Now it's been over half a year and I haven't had any problems since stretching every time I game. So I definitely recommend doing the stretching routine. It's very worthwhile and it's very, uh, it's just good to do. Just stretch your body in general. I promise it helps. One last thing I'd like to touch on with improvement in general is that your hours in a game do not reflect your skill. If you feel like you have a ton of hours in a game and aren't seeing improvement, consider how you're playing the game. Are you thinking about all your mistakes and how to fix them? Are you looking to improve and refine parts of your gameplay? Are you looking at all your weaknesses and how to strengthen them? Until I started doing this, I wasn't really improving at the pace I wanted to be improving. It sounds silly, but it really does all start with an improvement mindset, so I recommend reflecting on how you're treating the game, but being on this guide is definitely a step forward in improving. With all that being said, I plan on talking a bit more about hardware and how important it can be to understand what might be best for you, and also talking about more tips inside of Apex, but I decided I'm actually going to do multiple videos regarding improvement, so be on the lookout for those. Anyway guys, I hope this guide really helped you start improving your game in Apex, it won't make you the best player in the world as you still need to work on your game awareness and knowledge, but it's definitely a good step to begin with and it definitely helped make me the player I am today. If you have any questions regarding anything in this video, feel free to join my discord or stop by my stream when I'm live and ask in there. Both links will be in the description down below, so watch out for those. No Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed, please remember to hit the like button and drop a comment down below telling me what you'd like me to talk about next. Wait, what? You took like no damage.